the subway station we just came out of is also a shelter in case of a nuclear attack. This place is much more me and Kristen's style. Yeah. <laughs> kind of in the middle of nowhere. Okay, the location is good. It's just like in a back alley a little bit. Um, not the nicest looking outside or inside, but it's a good place to sleep deal. and it's cheap. <laughs> So very exciting news, on our walk up to our hotel, we passed a store that said vegan Ugh. Korean food. So that is where we're going for dinner. Super excited because this is the first actually vegetarian food that I think I'm getting this entire trip. So I am very excited and it says they do Korean food that's vegan. Okay, a bit of a sad update. Um, it's actually not open, like open, open. Like I think it's brand new and they're not open yet. So we're gonna look for something else. That's a little disappointing. Bag secured the makeup for the vegan restaurant. Are you gonna go eat it in our hotel room? <laughs> Oh yeah, we are. We're tired. We had a long day of traveling today. We took all forms of transit yet again. Subway, train, airplane, train, subway, walk. There's so, a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. So we're gonna go eat this. And I'm gonna edit vlogs. And then we're gonna come back out for a fancy drink. Not an alcohol one. <laughs> Not an alcohol one, Christian. <laughs> Look at this corn. Corn and cheese, no meat. This is not What did you get? Mine was like bacon and potato pizza. Oh, that looks good. Let's give it a look. See, give us a little feel back. That's good. Kind of hard to see. So, we're not really sure what they are. I'm pretty sure this is egg, but we'll see. <laughs> So the area we're staying in is called Myeongdong and it's actually a really popular shopping district and we're staying kind of like down one of the alleyways. But right now, it's our first day in Seoul and we're going out to get some breakfast. It's spelled like bibimbap. It might be pronounced bibimbap. Anyways, it's like rice and you mix rice and sometimes rice with beef. Like I got the rice with bulgogi beef and you mix all these vegetables into it and then put the special gochugung sauce. It's like the spicy sauce in it. And mix it all up a bunch and then eat it and it's, it's delicious. So it was really, really good. We didn't really know what we were doing because like, it came all separately like you saw. So we were like creeping on the tables next to us to see how they were eating it. Because we had no idea what to do. It was really, really good. Um, filling, probably the healthiest thing we've eaten. Yeah. And now we are headed to this like historic village in the Namban Park, which is right behind our hotel. And we're going to hike up the mountain to the Nambam ta Soul Tower. It's like N Soul Tower. I'm pretty sure the N stands for Nambit. Um, but that's what we're doing now. Also, Kirsten's really bad at making decisions. Oh, no. As opposed to me, I don't like making decisions, but I will make them. Whereas Kirsten loves talking through everything, yes. but cannot make a single decision ever. But then Hannah will just 
make the wrong decision. No, I'll make a decision and he'll go, but don't you want to do this? And it's like, well, why don't we do that then? Because you clearly didn't like my decision. <sighs> That's where we're going. I can't believe I just scanned. Japan. So what we've learned about the Japan and South Korea relations is that they actually don't get along at all but they're like the last hold strongs between North Korea and China which is communism obviously um, and so they're like they have to maintain a relatively good working relationship to make sure that they hold that peninsula. But they hate each other. We are a decent way up at this point. That's the tower. We're going. It looks further on camera than it actually is. This is our view. We didn't bring any water, which is stupid. Carson's sweating. Carson's struggling a little bit. He doesn't have that thick Godard blood in him. Carson just said thick Godard skull off camera, which is well. not very nice. We are 10 minutes out. It's hot. It's 31 degrees today. We don't have any water. Super dumb of us. But we are high up. Look at those mountains out there in Seoul. We're like 10 minutes away from the tower. So we're gonna make it. Also, a happy Canada Day. Cause today is July 1st, the day that we're filming it. So happy Canada Day. Wow. I'm sweaty person today, so it's can't really tell on camera. I feel like I'm not that sweaty. Right, we just walked up 1.2k of stairs, got ourselves a fancy special drink, and we're now at the tower at this viewpoint. Tower's and Carson we made it. We did it, we did it. <laughs> that was hard. I would, wasn't thinking Carson was gonna make it there for a bit. Do you think we're gonna go up, Carson? No, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> This tower with those lifts is where in To All The Boys I Loved Before in the second one I think it was when they come to Seoul and they're looking for the lock that their mom put on there This is where they did it So I mean obviously it's not here anymore Well at all <laughs>
Christian doesn't want to do any more Korean War Museum, but I'm dragging him to learn about the Korean War Museum. Dan! <laughs> I'm being bullied by Dan, I think. I've turned into my father. <laughs> We just finished in the Korean War Museum and it was super interesting learning about the war because I actually didn't know a lot going in but what it kind of boils down to is that after the Japanese colonization of the country of Korea um, there were tensions in the north and the south and then with the support of the USSR North Korea invaded South Korea um, and basically pushed them all the way down to the bottom um, uh, the, also, Stalin got the approval from China's um, president at the time um, to kind of improve their part in the invasion um, and China only agreed to interfere if the US got involved and eventually the US and the freshly formed UN got involved, sent troops over and it was the first time the UN actually interfered in something to that scale after its creation in 1945. Um, and basically what it boils down to is that it's just out of ceasefire right now. The war never came to a conclusion, the border was drawn, um, and that's that. It's just out of permanent ceasefire. But Hannah skips that the UN joined, so they got pushed down to the bottom. So South Korea was pushed all the way to the bottom, almost lost, almost retreated to an island and gave up the mainland. Then the UN came in and pushed North Korea to the Chinese border and had the entire country. But then China sent in their troops and did the whole uh, like fighting without even guns and stuff, the human wave tactic, and pushed them back down past below the 38th parallel. And then they just called a ceasefire and ended up exactly where they started, split the country down the middle. And that's kind of what we're at today. So it was really, really informative and the entire thing was free, so I highly recommend going there. Going to the DMZ. The bus is air conditioned. It's nice. It's nice. nice. Bus. She gave us little name cards with her name and contact info on it for the tour because apparently there's a lot of tour groups going. So if we get lost, it's like right in kindergarten. So we belong to. Yeah. <laughs> so we get get lost. Grace. She gave us a nice little background of the history, which is good because we went to the museum yesterday. So, so we're all talked up already. We know the history. Experts. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna voice this over because the audio was not great. I'm just explaining that the DMZ is the demilitarized zone which exists between North and South Korea. The two countries were separated by the 38th parallel, which is the border that separates them. And the DMZ exists for two kilometers on either side of the border where each country is forbidden from having any sort of military presence. Sometimes you're able to take tours of the JSA, which is the joint security area in which South Korean and North Korean officers are present. But right now due to tensions, we weren't able to do that tour. So at Peace Park, you can actually take the train in from Seoul to get here without a tour. There's a lot of different facilities at the park. There's kind of an amusement park. And then there's this like observatory deck here. And there's also a cable car that you can take to the other side of the river. But on a tour, you can just drive across. So we are just exploring the park. 
and we're gonna meet up with our tour in about 20 minutes. This is us on our little tour. This is like the this is the first tour that we've done together. This is like bus style tour. Yeah. Look at us, they only four years. So this bridge used to be over there, connecting to North Korea. And it's called Freedom Bridge because after the war, um, prisoners of war that were captured by North Korea were able to return to South Korea over this bridge. And prisoners that were captured by South Korea were able to return to North Korea through this bridge. Um, they moved it over here because the bridge, the main bridge connecting was demolished during the Korean War. Um, there's also a second bridge in the joint security area that is called the No Return Bridge and that is where South Koreans or North Koreans captured during the war could return to North Korea, but it's called the No Return Bridge. And they shouted freedom when they came back, so that's why they named it the Freedom Bridge. 13,000 South Koreans were returned over the Freedom Bridge. So this train used to be parked at a station where it was used to transport ammunition and that sort of war materials during the Korean War. And at some stage there was some sort of gunfire fight that happened where the South Koreans were on one side and the North Koreans were on the other. So it is quite beat up with the holes as you can see now. That North Korean city had gay song was the old capital city during the Korean dynasty. The new capital city of North Korea is Pyongyang, the capital city of South Korea is Seoul, but we are currently closer to the previous capital city that now lies in North Korea than we are to Seoul, as you saw, 22 kilometers. It's apparently like the metropolitan hub of North Korea. 300,000 people living there, and we're only like 22 kilometers away, that's not. The monument behind me is a tribute to families that were lost within South Korea during the South Korean War. During the war, if they got separated from their families, um, there's a television program that ran in the 80s, once the television became more popular, where you were able to write down personal information about yourself, like your name, the village you grew up in, and they would play that information on the program so you could hopefully be reunited with the family that you had lost. There were uh, over 100,000 submissions to this program, and the program was able to reunite 11,000 families. 30 years of mm. being lost. So this monument behind me is a monument where South Koreans can come and they can pay tribute to their lost family in North Korea um, because there is no internet access and you cannot contact anyone living within North Korea. So all of the family members that were lost when the border was drawn, this is where families come to celebrate holidays like Korean Thanksgiving and say their prayers and their well wishes for their family lost in North Korea. This train behind me used to shuttle between the two countries and it now stands stagnant as a memorial here with the inscription, let the iron horse run again because South Korea wants to be reunited with North Korea. So I think what a lot of people don't realize is that Japan colonized Korea up until the end of the Second World War. From 1910 until the end of the Second World War, so until 1945. And after that, they barely got to experience the liberation from Japan before the Korean War took place in 1950. So Korea has not been able to be fully liberated and fully unified for most of its recent history. Okay, we just finished in the third tunnel, which was the third of four tunnels that South Korea found that were dug by North Korea. Um, we, you, you weren't allowed to record or take pictures underneath there, so we just put our helmets on and we walked down, like super, super far to get down there. It was a little freaky. They dug the entire thing without machines because they didn't want to alert South Korea above ground. So they dug the entire thing by throwing tiny pieces of dynamite which would blow up and then they dig the rest by hand and then they tried to cover it up by saying that it wasn't like a sneaky tunnel, it was a coal mine tunnel. So they basically dug the entire thing by hand, which was insane. Man, it's super long when you get down there. It's like we walked 350 meters in this tunnel that's like, I have to bend down all the way like this. Yeah. It was creepy, but it's amazing. We were only 170 meters away from North Korea, which is the closest we'll ever be in our whole lives. And that's crazy to think about. Yeah. The 
descends into blackness. This back here is the part that was built by South Korea going down into the third tunnel. So that's where you walk down and then eventually it just goes really far underground. That right there is the previous capital of what was Korea during the dynasty, 22 kilometers away from here. And there's Seoul, the current capital of South Korea, 52 kilometers away. And here we are at the DMZ. And this is the 38th parallel line separating North Korea and South Korea that was drawn after the Second World War and the liberation of Korea from Japanese colonization. The northern half was taken over by the USSR and the southern half was occupied by the US. Okay guys, we're about to see North Korea with our own eyes. We're going up to the Dora Observatory where we can look down into North Korea and there's a village they built in the DMZ. It was a propaganda village back in the day, but apparently it's kind of old now. But anyways, we're gonna go look at that. Pretty awesome. So from this observatory, you can see the propaganda village that was built originally as a propaganda village, but now there are about a hundred people living there, I believe. You can also see the city I was telling you about that used to be the capital city of Korea when it was unified under a dynasty. Um, you can now see that with the big skyscrapers where, and apartment buildings where people live. You can also see the industrial area with the tower that was actually blown up by Kim Jong sister um, and then you can also see the guard post of the North Korean guards uh -huh. yeah down there is the line separating the military zones and the river is the center of the demilitarized zone North Korea Right now. The DMZ tour was probably one of my top 10 favorite things I've done in my entire life. Definitely top five like excursions slash tours that I've ever done. We absolutely loved it and I would highly, highly recommend. So I'll leave the link down below for the tour that we booked. It was, yeah, it was probably the best tour thing I've ever done in my life. It was just so amazing, unbelievable. I loved it. Mm -hmm. They give you a really good background on the history of the Korean War on the tour, but I'd really recommend going to the museum beforehand. I'll also leave, leave the link for the museum down below as well. Okay, we just got probably our last breakfast. I got kimchi fried rice. And Carson. I got bulgogi beef. This one's from Papa, his favorite food in Korea. Finally doing it, Papa. Can I try it? Yeah. <laughs> I finally bought myself a fan. Chris and let me get one. Oh, my God. 
ready to be found. Kristen and I just got bubble tea. We've been seeing it all over the place. Kristen got mango oh. apple as a smoothie. And I got kiwi pineapple. Oh, it's very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't wait for mine. Yeah, it's delicious. Mm, mine's also good. 10 out of 10. Okay, so I saw these drinks online from like they were viral from the Korean convenience stores. You buy the tub of ice and then your drink comes down and you took a bunch of different flavors. This is gonna fill his up. Oh, that's cool. but fun. Oh, it's good. Yeah. I got pear. It's also very good. All right, Chris is finally getting his fried chicken. And there's a lot of it. Yeah. 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 I'm having cheese balls. Look at this cheese ball. So yummy, so hot. Carson just ate an insane amount of fried chicken. Well, they only serve it for two people to share, like share dishes. Yeah. But I can't share it. So I was like, well, I really, really want it because it's famous. So I ate like way too much fried chicken actually, it was bad. And I had the best cheese balls in my entire life. It tasted like the mini donut dough, but like just filled with cheese, it was so good. I will say though, that the fried chicken was amazing. It was easily the best fried chicken I've ever had. It blows anything I've had out of the water. So it's really worth getting, but too much. <laughs> 